Hi, my name is Yoko Bean. I am one of the urogynecologists at St. Jude Medical Center. Um, I often get asked what a urogynecologist is, and we um, pretty much specialize in pelvic floor disorders. Um, and a lot of these disorders do occur in the postmenopausal period. Um, so I'll be talking today about life changes, specifically the postmenopausal pelvis. So a little introduction, about 64 million women are in the menopausal state in the United States. And over half of these women experience menopausal symptoms. But unfortunately, only 6% are currently undergoing treatment. The average age of menopause is 51 years old. Um, but given the current life expectancies, women can expect to live almost 40% of their lives after the start of menopause. So that's a significant portion of women's lives that are spent in the menopausal period. So by definition, menopause is the cessation of menstrual periods for a full 12 months. The menopausal transition, also known as perimenopause, begins on average about four years before the final menstrual period. Here are the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. So often women will complain of irregular menstrual cycles. Sometimes they'll say their periods are either getting lighter or getting heavier, um, sometimes going a few months without having a menstrual cycle. Um, women can often experience hot flashes, sleep disturbances, and mood symptoms. A part of menopause that many women do not often address is the genitourinary syndrome of menopause, which is what I'll be talking about today. So genitourinary syndrome of menopause. So it's a collection of different symptoms, all caused by a decrease in estrogen level. So it affects multiple parts of the pelvic floor and the pelvis, including the labia, vagina, urethra, bladder, and the pelvic floor. Estrogen is important for multiple aspects of the vagina, including maintaining vaginal collagen content to maintain its thickness and elasticity. Also, it maintains vaginal hyaluronic acid to keep all of the surfaces moist and healthy. Um, and it also maintains optimal genital blood flow. So here are the symptoms that women often, okay, I'm gonna start that slide over. Here are the symptoms of genitourinary syndrome of menopause that women will often experience. These include symptoms like vaginal dryness, burning, and irritation. Also, women will complain of some shortening or narrowing of the vaginal canal, which can often lead to pain with intercourse or sexual dysfunction. Women can also have urethral discomfort and other bladder symptoms, including urinary frequency or having urinary urgency. Oftentimes women have recurrent bladder infections or urinary tract infections after they become menopausal. Women can often have vaginal discharge attributed to low estrogen levels, as well as increasing the risk of pelvic organ prolapse and urinary incontinence. So we have a variety of different treatments of genitourinary syndrome of menopause. So I want women to feel comfortable as they enter the menopausal period because there are options for treatment to improve your quality of life. So I'll talk briefly about the initial treatment um, as well as treatment for persistent symptoms. And I'll also touch on different alternatives and special considerations for women with the history of breast cancer. So the initial treatment is non-hormonal management. So these are often used for women who complain of things like vaginal dryness, vaginal irritation, um, also pain with intercourse. Um, so the first line treatment is to start with a vaginal moisturizing treatment. So there are two classes of non-hormonal treatment and they include vaginal moisturizers and vaginal lubricants. 
So I think of vaginal moisturizers kind of more like a face cream. So it should be used routinely about two to three times a week and it maintains the moisture in the vagina. Um, there are multiple different products. I really like Replense Moisturizer. You can buy it over the counter. And again, you use it routinely to hold in the moisture. A vaginal lubricant um, you use at the time of sexual intercourse or if you feel um, dry in addition to the moisturizer. So again, vaginal moisturizers are intended to use routinely, um, whereas vaginal lubricants are to be used as needed, typically at the time of intercourse. Um, there are different types of lubricants. Um, the most common one is just a KY jelly, but you can also use kind of more natural things like coconut oil. So for persistent symptoms, we recommend vaginal estrogen therapy. So vaginal estrogen is used locally in the vagina um, as opposed to hormone replacement therapy, which is used for systemic estrogen. Um, hormone replacement therapy is usually given in the form of either a patch or a pill, and it's intended to have estrogen circulating through your bloodstream, specifically to help with some of the symptoms that I talked about earlier related to menopause. So things like hot flashes, sleep disturbances, and mood swings, because you really want that additional estrogen circulating through the bloodstream. Specifically for genitourinary syndrome of menopause, we only recommend localized, low-dose vaginal estrogen therapy. Um, so this means that the estrogen is not circulating through your bloodstream, so not really considered a form of hormone replacement therapy. Vaginal estrogen is effective for multiple symptoms of genital urinary syndrome of menopause, including vaginal dryness or discomfort, fragile tissue causing bleeding. Oftentimes women will say um, either after intercourse, they might have a little spotting, even sometimes after wiping, they can notice a little bit of spotting on their toilet paper. Um, and that's due to just really thin and fragile tissue in the vagina from menopause. You can also use vaginal estrogen to help with pain with intercourse. Um, it can also help with vaginal discharge that's due to low estrogen levels. It can also help with urinary frequency and urinary urgency. And it can also help with recurrent bladder infections. So these pictures here are different forms of estrogen therapy. Um, the most commonly prescribed um, vaginal estrogen therapy is usually in a cream form. So that's this top um, picture. Um, usually you put in the cream about two to three times a week and you insert the applicator inside of the vagina and the vaginal tissue will absorb that estrogen. It can also come in other forms such as a tablet. So the UvaFem is a tablet form. Invexi is kind of more of a capsule form of estrogen. And for women who have um, either a difficult time putting in the estrogen cream regularly, um, an S-string is a really good option. Um, it will slowly release estrogen um, at a very low dose over a three month period. So you can have that replaced by your physician every three months to deliver that localized estrogen treatment. So I just wanted to go over a couple of myths. These are things that I hear every day in the office. So the first myth is vaginal estrogen will give me cancer. So oftentimes I'll prescribe vaginal estrogen and although I go over the difference between local and systemic estrogen, um, many women are hesitant about using the estrogen therapy. So vaginal estrogen used at recommended low doses do not cause significant increases in estrogen in the bloodstream. So this has been confirmed by studies where they draw blood of women who are on vaginal estrogen therapy to measure estrogen levels and they all remain in the postmenopausal range. So there's no more circulating estrogen from using vaginal estrogen therapy to put you into the premenopausal range. So it is considered very safe. 
Another question I get is I am already on an oral or a patch estrogen, so a systemic estrogen, so I don't need vaginal estrogen. So that is also false. So vaginal estrogen is used to treat symptoms of genitourinary syndrome of menopause, um, whereas systemic estrogen is used to treat systemic symptoms such as hot flashes, sleep disturbances, and mood changes. If you are on an oral or a patch estrogen for other menopausal symptoms, you can still use vaginal estrogen. So you can use them concurrently. Um, I also get questions often where women are on an oral or a patch estrogen, so they don't think that they need any vaginal estrogen because that estrogen should be covering um, any estrogen that the vagina needs. Um, I do find that women who are on long-term systemic estrogen therapy um, oftentimes don't show as many signs of genitourinary syndrome. Um, however, women who are on systemic estrogen can still complain of things like vaginal dryness, recurrent bladder infections, pain with intercourse, um, things like that. So you can definitely be on both concurrently. So I did just wanna to touch on some alternative treatments um, and they can also be additive. So it's, um, you can be on vaginal estrogen therapy and still um, add on one of these other alternative treatments. So the first one is pelvic floor physical therapy, which I can't stress the importance of pelvic floor physical therapy enough. Um, it can treat all kinds of pelvic floor disorders, including pain with intercourse, pelvic organ prolapse, urinary incontinence, overactive bladder and urinary urgency and frequency. So oftentimes women will be on both a local vaginal estrogen and pelvic floor physical therapy concurrently. Vaginal dilator use is also recommended specifically for women who have pain with intercourse or vaginal canal narrowing or stenosis from low estrogen levels. Um, I get questions a lot about vaginal laser therapy. So um, vaginal laser therapy can be used to treat genital urinary syndrome of menopause. So vaginal dryness, um, thinning of the vaginal lining, urinary incontinence. Um, it is a controversial treatment. There is very limited data on the efficacy of vaginal laser therapy. Um, a lot of it is more anecdotal from the provider. They have found that their patients have shown improvement. Um, it is important to note that oftentimes vaginal laser therapy is cash pay. So it's um, not covered by insurance yet, um, likely because the, the data to support its efficacy is limited. So I did wanna add a slide about special considerations for women with a history of breast cancer. So genitourinary syndrome of menopause is very common in women who have had a history of breast cancer. And this is because most breast cancer in women is estrogen receptor positive. So it does um, respond to circulating estrogen levels. So that is why many women who have a history of breast cancer are on an anti-estrogen therapy for many years, sometimes five to 10 years um, to prevent recurrence of the breast cancer. So if you're on an anti-estrogen therapy, then it does exacerbate a lot of the symptoms of genitourinary syndrome of menopause. Of course, the first line therapy is often non-hormonal. Um, so if anything, can be resolved with things like the vaginal moisturizers, physical therapy, vaginal dilators, um, that kind of thing, it would be first line for women with a history of breast cancer. However, if women have persistent symptoms, hormonal options can be used. Um, we do often like to discuss the use of a hormonal treatment with your oncologist. However, because the level of circulating estrogen with a local vaginal estrogen is so low, it has not been associated with an increased risk of breast cancer recurrence. And this has been shown in multiple studies. So I do have women with a history of breast cancer who are on a local vaginal estrogen therapy to improve their quality of life. 
So I did want to touch on some questions that I do get from patients in my office. So one comment I receive very frequently is women will say, I don't really have to worry about menopausal symptoms. I already went through menopause and now I'm done. So I already had my hot flashes. So now I don't really have any more menopausal symptoms. And that is a common misconception about menopause. So I like to think of menopause, not so much something that you go through and you get past, but kind of moving into a new phase of your life. So you really will spend um, you know, a good 40% of your life in the postmenopausal period. So it, you should really embrace it and kind of think about it as you're moving into a new stage of your life where you do have to be aware of these different changes. Um, but it's really not something that you have to live with. So, you know, women will always say, you know, the, the vaginal dryness and burning is just a part of aging. So it's just something that I'm going to have to live with, even though it makes me uncomfortable. Um, and really, you know, the, the field of urogynecology and pelvic medicine is to really improve your quality of life. So if there's anything, um, you know, that you've noticed after being becoming menopausal, um, I think it's worthwhile to discuss these with your physician to see if there's something that we can do to help you be more comfortable. Um, and then another question I get um, quite often is about recurrent bladder infections. So I do see this consult quite often that, um, you know, after becoming menopausal, um, women have started to get more urinary tract infections. And this is most of the time due to being in the menopausal period. So the vaginal estrogen level significantly drops once you enter menopause. The estrogen is really important for maintaining a good environment in the vagina, specifically the pH, where it allows your natural vaginal flora, so all of the good bacteria that lives in the vagina, to live there. And they're kind of your first line of defense for the pathologic or bad bacteria from entering the bladder and causing a UTI. So if you're menopausal, you don't have enough estrogen in the vagina, the pH rises in the vagina, all of that good flora in the vagina, they just don't want to live there anymore. So you don't really have that first line of defense. So, you know, the first treatment I recommend for women who come in with recurrent bladder infections is to start using a local estrogen therapy. And for many women, they, their symptoms become significantly better and they don't have to suffer from having recurrent bladder infections. Um, another question I receive quite often is the cost of estrogen treatment. Um, so, you know, unfortunately for women, um, insurance companies don't often um, completely cover vaginal estrogen therapy. Um, there are multiple types of estrogen treatments that I mentioned before. So kind of two different um, brand names of creams to get. Um, again, there's also a tablet form, uh, more of a capsule form, and then a ring form. So I do recommend, you know, if one type of estrogen treatment is not covered, um, really talk to your provider and see if there's another option for you. Um, worst case scenario, if nothing is really covered for you, you can get vaginal estrogen cream compounded at a compounding pharmacy. Um, and, you know, that would be just as good at adding in some local estrogen therapy. I do get asked all the time as well about how long you have to be on estrogen treatment. So if you come in for vaginal dryness, burning with intercourse, you start using the estrogen treatment, which I usually say takes a few weeks to work. So I really say give it six, eight weeks to work, and then you start feeling better. Um, then how long do you need to use it for to kind of maintain its efficacy? And I tell women it is considered an indefinite treatment because your body does not make estrogen anymore. If you stop using the local estrogen, then unfortunately your symptoms will likely come back. So the estrogen treatment um, is unfortunately something that we do recommend to continue for the rest of your life. Um, those are all the questions I have for today. Thank you so much for listening in and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you.